شهر القرآن فيك أذوب حلا Good afternoon and welcome to Islamic Reflections on Lama FM, featuring our very own scholar, Ustaza Maha Hamui. We are happy to be with you every day during this blessed month of Ramadan, the most beloved month to God, subhanAllah wa ta'ala. And we look forward to this time with you as we learn together about Ramadan and its spiritual benefits. كم أهواك يا شهر الصيام أنا لن أنساك فأنت في قلبي دائما تمضي الأيام ودعائي كل عام ربي تقبلنا يا ربي بلغنا بلغنا رمضان أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام لتماء الأكملان على سيدنا محمد أبد الآبدين وفي كل وقت وحين وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم uh, In our continuation with talking about fasting in Ramadan and the benefits and the fruits of fasting in Ramadan Today our concentration is going to be about الشكر thankfulness or gratefulness and uh, how much it is a part of our religion in fact uh, and so to better understand that we begin with uh, the verse uh, 185 of Surah Al-Baqarah or the heifer uh, or the cow as we were actually discussing even before in our previous sessions and this verse, in fact, begins by talking about mentioning uh, the Qur'an, which we actually talked about in our previous session. And uh, if we were to read it, it reads like this in English. The month of Ramadan is that in which was revealed the Qur'an, a guidance for the people and clear proofs of guidance and criterion. So whosoever cites the new moon of the month let him fast fast it and whosoever is ill or on a journey then an equal number of other days allah intends for you ease and does not intend for you hardship and wants for you to complete the period and glorify allah for that to which he has guided you and perhaps you will be grateful as we have mentioned before in fact as a muslim this is uh, the the ni'mah or the favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us for which we must be most grateful, most thankful. That is the favor of Islam. I find that sometimes you go to actually condole certain people who are not Muslims if they lost a loved one or if they had lost even a possession a car accident, they had met, uh, met with some sort of a mishap, you find yourself unable to in fact explain anything to them in any whichever way. We find that the dunya issues, this world issues, cannot be understood without a connection to the hereafter, without a connection to God, the one and only who decides and decrees what goes on in the world. If we don't have an understanding of that, and if we don't have a connection with actually the religious matter that is above all what takes place in our lives, it's really difficult to understand the world that we're in, and it just doesn't make sense and you don't find it to be fair in general. And uh, it might leave a person angry and it might leave a person dissatisfied. It might leave a person, in fact, depressed. Negative feelings creep 
creep up on us rather quickly and they actually make a person feel a sense of uh, uh, a loss uh, a sense of in fact hopelessness sometimes actually none of these feelings should be in connection with a true mu'min of course less that mu'min or that muslim has a specific psychological disorder in which i'm not going to be discussing at all but uh, or in which case he should be actually getting some professional help but the idea generally islamically is that we should be the people who are in fact very hopeful we should be the survivors we should be the ones that always have positive energy looking forwards to whatever years we're in a lot of times also people as they actually advance in their years and the number of the years that they pertain to their age becomes higher they find actually they try to find a specific escape mannerism uh, buying a new car getting a new wife uh, Uh, having children at an older age buying a new bracelet I have no idea it just it makes actually a person feel renewed or revived I suppose and that does work for a period of time where does that lead me or how do I connect all what I'm saying to thankfulness actually it is because thankfulness is uh, there is a sense of feeling that I am covered and surrounded um, by uh, in fact um, favors and something that is favored to me so when a person is has a thankful nature in our society here they say they look at the glass half full rather than the glass half empty due to the fact that the concentration is on what is good in my life So when a person is thankful, to be thankful, they say that you ought to, in fact, count the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he had bestowed upon you. And if you start counting, of course, the Quran says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا That means you're just never going to finish counting. It means that as soon as I start concentrating on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me, rather than what I'm missing, then uh, in fact I find it to be endless, and I find it to be actually continuous, and I find myself grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That connection is quite of a high degree connection, and it is a heartfelt connection, and it does actually motivate and changes the mood of the person and the heartfelt motivation actually that uh, make a person much more hopeful and, 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 and carry on his life actually in a much, much a more positive attitude. I find this world that we're in is on a constant search of the positive energy, whether we find it in the sea, whether we find it, God forbid, in a pill, whether we find it in a, some sort of a speedy car, I have no idea. But a positive energy in reality has to do with the soul and only with the soul. And it's a very spiritual nature type of an energy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that indeed fasting gets us to achieve that. There's a possibility if we think about it of why that might be on a physical note that something that maybe we can in fact uh, uh, have a, a better connection with or an easier connection with when we talk about a, a physical perspective of a, of a worship. When a person is hungry, this is, or thirsty or both, that is actually our very, very main stay. Like that is the uh, lowest form of need that we have or the basic need that we've got. And if the basic need that we have is not quite met for a period of time, which I've, of course in the fasting day, it, it can span these days in Ramadan is in the summer and, it, and it's spanning in the area of 16 hours, some people even 20 hours of fasting. 
During that time when even the basic need is not met, one is reminded of, of people who don't have who don't have that and uh, even their basic needs. And it doesn't mean that we don't remember them other times, but it seems that when a human being really is enduring a very a specific situation, they understand others much better. I'll give you an example. There are a lot of people that at an older age, and I'm not talking about 50, I'm talking about 30, and I'm talking older than, than the youth, the teenagers. As soon as they get to be in their 30s, they possibly turn around and say, now I understand what my mom meant or what my dad meant when they said what they said. And now I wish my children would listen to me. Although in that time, I kind of thought that I knew better and maybe my parents did not know better. An ill person, nobody can understand them until a person is ill themselves. Then they understand others and they can have a compassion towards them. It seems that we humans tend to actually deny sometimes or or kind of walk blindly uh, concern, concerning other people or, or concerning their needs. But when we feel it, it makes us actually a lot more aware and, 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 and we tend to be there than for others. And that is actually not just a form of thankfulness, but it is thankfulness. So what is in fact a shukr in the Arabic language, the way we understand it? A shukr is not something you say. A shukr is something you do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said, uh, in the Quran to the family of David, Dawood alayhi salam, he said, ala Dawood shukra. And then he said, very few of my worshippers are thankful. And what does that mean? In fact, it, it means that uh, it, the, the Arabic language of that says, uh, and gives us a very good understanding of it, when it says, shakarat al and that means then a naqa is a she camel, and and now the she camel is grateful. And I mean, it's not like a, a, the she camel can be grateful, and it's a heartfelt feeling. It, they're talking about something physical, and they say that about a she camel, when in fact she gives milk without being milked at all. She just drips milk. And so actually without actually without being milked, she's giving. Now we understand that that means that thankfulness as a form of, of an action is a form of giving. It's a form of giving without anybody asking. And so it's a feeling always that I have so much that I have left over and I need to actually help others and I need to be there for others and I, every time you think about that you think well we're talking about something that is financial economical it's all about money and it's not about money at all it's about anything that we have as time goes as a, a, a physical capabilities as uh, a, being able to see and maybe others cannot as being able to cook as an other cannot. It's just anything that you can do, actually, and you can offer to the ummah, young or old or any whichever way. You walk to the masjid and you just simply decide that maybe the people have left the shoes uh, all over the place as you entered into the masjid, so untidy like, and so you tidy everything up and you put them on the shelves, even though there are shelves all over the place and some people tend not to see them as they are stacking up to the ceiling, that is all okay. Maybe I can see them for them. And maybe the next time when they look for their pair of shoes or slippers and they find it on the shelf, they do recognize that that's what I'm trying to say. That is actually a form of thankfulness. That maybe I am more humble, perhaps. Maybe I am more capable, perhaps. Maybe I want the message of this message to be really uh, something that is better for maybe some non-Muslim or even another Muslim comes in there. Anyway, that is a form of thankfulness. And I'm just giving examples as such, actually just to give us an idea that the, the area of being thankful is really very, very vast. So now we talked about uh, a shukr as being a state of mind, which 
is a very, very positive state of mind. And we talked about it, that it is in fact an action, not just simply a word of mouth. Okay, walillahi shukr. And that's true. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs gratefulness. But actually, as I said, he, la ilaha illahu, told us that what we need to do with that is in fact share it with others and be a contributing factor in the Muslim community and even the non-Muslim community that we live that we live within. If we do actually get to that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us uh, in the Quran, first of all, he said, in kuntum First of all, he said, be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you truly worship him. So apparently we understand that the one who does not actually thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a proper sense. Also, there's another verse in the Quran that says, وَإِتَّأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ That is in Surah Ibrahim, verse 6. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know solemnly that if you are to be thankful, then I will give you more. And if you are denying my favors, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, then my punishment is strict. And then he adds, subhanAllah, and he says, very few of my worshippers are thankful. So these are actually of a higher quality type of a worshipper. There are many different types of worshippers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with fasting is actually allowing us to be elevated to those types of worshippers that he loves the most, that are closest to him. And I'm saying elevated because when we are approaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are actually on a higher uh, state or status uh, religiously and spiritually than we have been before. So fasting is actually supposed to help us in this area. There is a, a, a scholar that actually uh, talked about shukr. He described it as, he said, it's a, a state of being <clears throat> that is, in fact, that, uh, that the action of the worshippers emanate from it. It is a way uh, that, uh, that on a psychological note you always follow and it in fact fills the hearts with joy and you cannot help but follow that by alhamdulillah wa shukrillah so like emanates from that are goodly words on the tongue and goodly actions on for the rest of of, of the of the senses that we have sayyidna sulaiman uh, alayhi salam he actually also has a dua and he said, Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'amataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayy wa an a'mala salihan tardah. He said, uh, Ya Allah, Rabbi, my Lord, he said, he, uh, he uh, permit me to thank you for all the favors that you had bestowed upon me and upon my parents and that I will do goodly action that you will accept and that will be pleasing to you. Muhammad وسلم, was exemplary, of course, in all actions. But the action of shukr uh, in specification for Rasulullah وسلم, was very amazing that we have a, a story pertaining to that. As Sayyida Aisha, his wife, narrates, radiallahu anha, that she said, Rasulullah sallallahu was sleeping in my quarters for one night, and I woke up trying to find him in, in, in my bed and did not find him. I assumed he went out for a need that, they, that he had. And then I went to sleep again. I woke up and still could not find him. I looked in the room, could not see him. And so I thought maybe he went out for water or for washing up or whatever. I went back to sleep. Literally, she was sleeping and waking up practically all night trying to find Rasulullah sallallahu upon which she decides that possibly he went into another quarter of his house, of his house with another one of his wives. So she gets up, 
and she finds him in a sujood actually saying subuhun quddus rabbul malaikati wal ruh rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was glorifying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with thankful words and with of course very goodly words uh, and she actually laughed and she said ya rasulullah where you are or where and where am i where i am so like she finds the of course the distinct difference between what she was thinking and what he is doing but when he finished she looked at his feet and his feet were actually by by now all uh, swollen and and he's exhausted he's been in fact at prayer practically the whole night long and she said ya rasulullah why would you do that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven all of your sins and he promised you that and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said afala akunu abdan shakura so he said so shouldn't i be a thankful worshiper then for what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon me so it's a very amazing feeling the idea of thankfulness and it seems that it is the very first thing that we should do as humans allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us wa wassayna al-insana bi walidayhi hamalatuhu ummuhu wahnan ala wahn wa fisaluhu fi 'amayn an ishkur li wa li walidayka ilayya al-masir he said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying he said and we had advised mankind to be gentle and kind to his parents his mother carried him uh, exhaustion upon exhaustion that her body was actually exhausted to do that and that also she he did not separate from his mother for two years and then he said anishkurli wali walidayka so be thankful to me be thankful to them for to me you will return uh, the idea then of thankfulness is obviously the very 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 first thing that we ought to do is as though when you're young that's the very first thing that we should do and we seem to be doing that as we are young i'm hoping that we continue on doing that if you ask a child who is the best person in your life usually they say my mother before father subhanallah just like rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the mother the mother the mother and then the father apparently because the connection is so strong uh, firstly with the mother then eventually with the father and that feeling in itself without even saying anything is of course thankfulness for personified with that inshallah we finish our session and inshallah we will continue on uh, our sessions pertaining to fasting in ramadan جزاكم الله خير وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم We would like to thank our listeners for joining our program today. A special thank you goes out to Lama FM for hosting us and for giving us the chance to share Ustaza Maha Hamwi's thoughts. We look forward to talking to you on our next episode of Islamic Reflections.